The beginning of the week was a nightmare for Nairobi. A decision by Governor Mike Sonko to ban Matatus from accessing the central business district left thousands of city dwellers stranded in traffic for hours. But why did the governor make this hasty decision? Was this a simple misstep from the governor or a glimpse into county politics? Ashamwele reports. Three weeks ago, special assignment took on the subject of public transport in Nairobi City. We spoke to the main stakeholders in the new plan for a bus rapid transit system. This is what we expect the case of Thika Road because... And we learned from the chairperson of Nairobi Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, Namata, that government had already engaged Matatu owners on how they would be incorporated into this new infrastructure. Having an MOU with public transport operators, it is the first time this has happened in Kenya. So when Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko decided to ban Matatus from the CBD entirely, all stakeholders were caught off guard. It just showed a lack of proper planning. This was one of uh, the shockingly stupid decisions made in recent times. You should have seen Nairobi, uh, police with guns, all of them, you are attacking one key question that popped up for us was whether the governor has been included in these decongestion plans by Namata and whether Monday's decision signaled power politics in play. Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja certainly thinks so. The county government and the governor have shown resistance to Namata um, because they feel, oh, this is a tough thing, they're, they're taking away our powers, they're taking away, they're going to take away our revenue, which is completely myopic thinking. Most of them are... When we first met Edwin Mukabana of Kenya Bus Services, he had just been appointed chairperson of the newly formed Federation of Public Transport Operators. Then, he told us that the Federation was invited to weekly meetings with Namata to learn how the BRT system would run in the CBD. Now you stop Today, Mukabana reveals to us his reservations about the politics around these plans. I am not sure whether the county government is sitting properly into this. Uh, I'm not sure whether the county assembly is in sync with what needs to happen. This is something that needs to be resolved because uh, I see a bit of tensions that are going on. Uh, you go to, to Nairobi Metropol Metropolitan Authority, you hear they're talking about um, uh, mass rapid transit. Uh, where BRT is being considered. You sit with some people in the county and they're talking about rail, uh, light rail. Now, these are totally different funding mechanisms. We wanted to find out from the governor himself whether these accusations were true. But Governor Sonko's promises for an interview with us have not been forthcoming. We also sent him the questions we had for him but received no answers from the county government. Throughout the week, the governor has shied away from any public appearances, choosing to instead self-broadcast his statement, explaining that the national government was well aware of Monday's decision. Nairobi City County Government, with full support from the national government, effected Gazette Notice Number 4479 of 12th May 2017. <laughs> How on earth um, <laughs> could such a crucial decision be made without proper planning initially? Were you part of this? Because he kept on referring to, to working with the national government. Uh, there was a lot of inconvenience, which we cannot deny. Um, and uh, we regret for that, actually, as uh, both national government and county government. But the nasty traffic congestion was not just a simple inconvenience for Peter Maina and his young family. <laughs> We meet him at his home in Makongeni along Jogo Road. His sister-in-law helps him to calculate burial arrangements for his eight-month-old son. On Monday morning, he was rushing his baby to hospital but got stuck in the snarl-up. His son died on arrival at Mbagadi Hospital. Like many Nairobians, Peter fails to understand why plans to decongest the city appear to be taking many turns. In 2013, City Hall prepared the Nairobi Integrated Urban Plan that laid out a detailed process for decongesting the city. 
It was agreed upon all stakeholders, the technical working group, there's even an implementation matrix. But, but, but once you see there's no commitment to this plan, then people with their own commercial interests then come up. The politicians are meant to ex execute, that's why they're, they're, they're executive. But then they cannot come and pick and choose uh, plans uh, that's going to benefit them personally. To guarantee synergy between the county and national governments, the president appointed the Nairobi Regeneration Committee. The governor is a co-chair of this committee. But ever since its inception, the Nairobi Regeneration Committee has not been public with the progress of their work. These, uh, these plans, you have to Google, you, have, you write to them, they don't respond. So I ask them, who are, then who are you working with and who are you working for? Because they, have, they make it look like it's a secret, the one to, to launch. Regeneration, in my opinion, is acting like um, a, myster a mysterious animal of some sort. It has no face. Nobody knows who it is, but it is there pulling things in the background. It wasn't even an issue, an issue of, of having too many cooks. Uh, what are those cooks cooking? Yeah, they've been cooking BRT, they've been cooking uh, public transport, uh, mass public transport, they've been cooking light rail. If they are involving the stakeholders, they are not educating the stakeholders. Akifanya jabu, awe kwanza na consort. Unaona sasa mutoto akikufa, hawezi rudi, ama mutu. Zaza wenye waliyeda loss. Loss ya pesa huwezi tiganisa na loss ya rai. The governor be impeached. I don't know, that's for the MCS to decide. And I, and, and I don't think it is wise for us to impeach the governor now. I think, I think he can still pull up his socks. Yeah, there's no need for any impeachment. And if it comes to the Senate, I will resist it at this point. Nairobians continue to struggle with poor work parts, non-existent cyclist lanes, and a public transport system that leaves little to be desired. Asham Willu on special assignment for Citizen TV in Nairobi.